my way to Auto Hobby to change out this uh, discharge pipe. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of sound prior to see if we can tell a difference. So yeah. this is about 3,500 RPM. And that's with the window closed. Let's slow down, open the window a little bit. Sorry if there's noise. Well guys, as it turns out, the exhaust shop had this on backwards. See, it has that dip there. It was on the opposite way when I did this resonator delete. It's nice and rusty now. But the 034, 034, sorry, bad habit, is on. Literally all you gotta do is drop down the shield. It's just a couple 10 mil plastic eyes along these plastics going down. So 12 mil for this, 12 or 13, 13 I think for these nuts, but it's a nice piece. And it does give quite the clearance, so that's nice. All right, guys, I'm currently uninstalling my PCM and we're going to go ahead and get this um, charge pipe installed. So the belly pan's gotta come off. It's a handful of like 225s, easiest part. Get that bad boy off. We're gonna get under here. We're gonna take this little tab off of the charge pipe. You see on the back side, there's a little circle. We're gonna press on that circle with a pick and then pop this off. And then we're gonna get up in here, um, right there. I believe it's a T30-ish. And we're gonna unscrew that. And then we're gonna also loosen up the hose here. Let me get zoomed out. And then everything else I believe is gonna be from up top, from what I can see at least. Yeah, we're gonna have to take the intake off and uh, you know get get there under the turbo inlet to get the other hose off the other side, and then there'll be another mounting spot on the side of the block up top. So we'll get to that in a moment. Pick, see if I can do this one-handed. So we're gonna push it in, and then boom. I'm not sure if we actually have to take this. Off. It's so hard to show with the lighting in here. Um, so this wraps around. Your cooling hose, you can see how the teeth, so you just kind of lift up on this, pull this out, and then this just pulls straight up off of this tab right here is where this sits. It sits in the tab and then holds around this so you can get to this, this one right here, to the right. Well, we'll get this off. I'll finish removing my PCM, and if anybody wants to buy this, let me know. So I got around the back of the intake hose. It is a seven millimeter. I used this little uh, doohickey. It was nice because I had it tucked real nice back down in there. But now we have access to this. Another T30 here. And then we'll have to figure out what other things, the, 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 the wiring harness is connected to it here. We'll have to pull that off. This one I already kind of pulled off by accident. This is where that one goes. I just left this connected to the intake. Figured I'd show you guys how this is being done. You can see the wrench is back behind the inlet. You see I got my little swivel on there. It's a bit of a stretch, but this is the best way I've found to do it. All right, so how I was telling you guys to do this back one, I couldn't get the hose off the turbo. Pull your battery box off, which is just three 10 mils. Um, you get the wiring clip. You got to pull this out. And I went ahead and did the other side of the hose right here, as you can see, which was, I did it down back here. I had to like get down in there with the flathead and then go up and then kind of like move around to get the, the hose unstuck.
All right, that took me maybe five minutes to get out, which you mostly gotta worry about. So you got this coolant line down there. You got this, the little wire that you took off down there. So you got a little clip for it. You gotta watch out for those. Make sure you're not yanking on nothing. Once you get higher, you gotta watch out for this coolant hose. And then you gotta watch out for the wiring here. So those are all things to look out for. And also this coolant hose and this wiring. I pulled this wiring out of this to get this kind of out of the way. So all that to look out for and just kind of wiggle, rotate, wiggle, rotate, make sure you're not subtle, nothing. And then she's out. And we can compare. So this was the, yeah, definitely a way bigger difference. You got this turbo muffler built in here. You can't see anything. I tried, can't see anything. That's it. Maybe we'll cut it open or something. Uh, yeah. There she is. It's a nice tab. The way they made the tabs on the APR one, similar to that one down there. I did pull the screws and grommets off the old one. That way we can place those into the APR pipe. It should go in a little bit smoother, but uh, we'll see. All right. A lot of finagling, but nothing too crazy. It went down way easier than it came up. Uh, just getting, I forgot to put the rubber grommet on before I sent it down there. So put your rubber grommet on first, but you can, you'll have to leave obviously the screw part off. Well, I guess you don't really have to, but it's one less thing to get caught on wires and stuff. So definitely do that first. I made that mistake. I got it down there, but then my intercooler hose was kind of preventing the whole thing from like wanting to go into place. So I had to like bring the pipe back up, get it into the intercooler hose, and then it kind of brought it down. And then this side was kind of the same thing. I couldn't get it to line up to this bolt because it wasn't in the hose, but I had to like push down kind of extra down here to rotate this. And I kind of held it here with one hand and had a flathead and took the flathead around the outside to kind of slip um, the hose over it because it wanted to like fold and be all dumb so kind of held a hair used the other hand uh, got the hose on and it popped in then I was able to grab it right here and kind of manipulate this to where I wanted it I haven't tightened it down yet I just got it you know a little bit in there this guy here for the hose all right roughly how things should look down here Put your clamp on all nice Put your wiring guy back on there bolt back in there which I'm about to tighten up Nothing's hitting nothing. Everything's clear. If you guys were wondering what the new diverter valve looks like since it's not on the turbo. It'll focus right there. Call it in one minute. Interesting. There on the pipe. All right, guys. There's the APR pipe. She's in. Everything's looking good. Can't really see a whole lot, but uh, she's there. All right, y'all. Y'all know I don't have that intake box on now so it doesn't like it's just way louder it just sounds it sounds really good no little... like everything is way louder it sounds so good i have to give like a little update sounds insane it's crazy without the box you open air intake people are like you get all the sounds I, I prefer the closed box for one trying to avoid hot air even though it's not that big of a deal I, I really I take a lot of pride in my engine bay and I really just think open air intakes don't look the best in my opinion and I've really just like the OEM plus look of the, the racing line box so um, maybe with my plans I don't want to get anything away but in the future we'll see uh, how we can get more sound out of that box while still having the box. But for now, I'm gonna give it a, a thumbs up on the APR pipe. Um, I, I mean, it, it just could be placebo and it, and it very well, I mean, 99% could be, but it does feel like the auto response is a little bit better, just a tad. Um, and really like when going into the, the next stages of power, stage one plus, stage two, when you're adding more boost and stuff, you want, to really have, you want to have the least restrictive intake, the least restrictive pipes, and the least restrictive of exhaust to help 
the turbo work less and uh, that'll also help the turbo create less heat if it's working less so all these little mods might only be a couple horsepower here and there but in the end they add up I think especially when you're gonna go to autocross like me or you know all the street shenanigans when you're beating on the car time after time after time you really want to have um, just that little bit of extra you know you, you did things the right way so I'm gonna give it a buy a thumbs up I don't really know about the throttle pipe honestly the pipe going from the intercooler to the throttle body I might get it uh, eventually but I never did it on my mark 7 I mean I mean I was pushing 40 I think 42 43 pounds at one point on the beta turbo from EQT and uh, it never really seemed like it was restrictive enough to be replaced so I don't think it will need to be on this either uh, that's my two cents let me know what you guys think install was pretty simple um, yeah thanks for watching look out for the next one and I'll catch you on the flip flop alright I got it got her in there she's sitting on the ground back in a week or so